Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your instructor for this AZ-900 examination series. In this walkthrough, we're going to learn about how to create a blob storage, how to create a storage account and how to monitor a storage account. So without wasting any more time, let's head back to the Azure portal. So now I'm in my Azure portal. You can click on storage accounts or you can go to all services and go under storage and select a storage account to create your brand new storage account. As you can see that I already have one storage account created for something else. So basic information is all you need to provide to create a storage account. Make sure you select your right subscription, uh, create or select an existing Azure resource group because that is super important. And to create a storage account, one thing you need to note is you need to have a unique name for a storage account to be created because most of the names are taken and uh, without a unique name, Microsoft Azure won't let you proceed further. So to find a unique name is quite challenging most of the time. So I randomly give some number because that is not super important how I name the storage account. All I need is a storage container so that I can do my task. So looks like it is accepted. Uh, so I just give a random number to make sure that no other fancy error is going to pop up. Uh, select a location where you want to keep your storage account. You have two performance layer. One is standard and premium. Premium will give you solid state performance with low latency, high availability. And then we have account kinds like cool and hot, which you don't need to worry about at the moment because that is not going to be relevant for Azure AZ-900 Azure Fundamental Scores. We will learn, we will learn more about Azure Storage, uh, about the types of storage account and the kind in the AZ-104 examination series. So if you're interested, please check that examination course. So now the deployment is underway. To create a storage account, it hardly takes uh, probably 30 to 40 seconds. That's all you need to wait to create a storage account. And uh, to check the status of the deployment, uh, you can go to the bell icon and click on the notification tab to find out all the deployment process which is happening under the hood. Yeah, looks like our storage account is created successfully. I can click on go to resource. It straight away take me into the storage account. If I go back to my storage account container, uh, along with the one storage account I already had, if I refresh my browser, go back to my storage account, you can see that there is one more storage account created, which is just now something what we created for this demonstration. Within the storage account, you have options to create the container, the file share, tables, and queues. And even within all of this, you have plenty of other options like how you would like to connect, how you would like to share this container, uh, what about uploading and downloading data, etc. For this example, I'm going to call it as container one. I'm going to leave rest of the value to its default because I don't want to talk and complicate things for you. I know you are quite new to Azure and I want you to feel comfortable when you listen to this topic. Because if I talk about a lot of options which is not going to be relevant for you, you feel like Azure is complicated. Azure is not. Azure is super simple. All you have to do is take one step at a time, baby steps, and then you will reach where you want to reach. All right. Now we have our container created. Let's see how we can upload a file to the container. So I'm going to create a sample file within my local PC. It doesn't have to be anything. It's just a random file so that we know that we can upload and download these files. So I select the container and I can simply click on upload and I can upload using the browser itself. That's one example of how you can upload uh, a file to the container. The second example is you could use Azure Storage Explorer. So I would do a totally separate video on how you can use Azure Storage Explorer because it's a cool product. 
the Azure Storage Explorer is available within the portal and there is a standalone software you can download as well. Again, it's totally free. So you could use Azure Storage Explorer, AZ Copy, all of these tools to move a massive amount of data back and forth, upload and download from Azure Storage or back to your on-prem as well. So that's a quick example of how to do that. Now you have seen it. If anybody would like to access this file, you can click on the sample file, copy it and go to the another link. Uh, this won't display anything because it's not a particular file. It's not a JPEG uh, or etc. Just a random file. Um, I can delete it. I can download the file. I can check the version control. If I enable backup, I can see the snapshot of the backup, etc. from that container itself. Now let's quickly go and see one more example of how to create a file share. Again, creating a file share is super simple. So I have made another video which explicitly talking about the benefits of file share and things like that. File share is one of my cool Azure service. So I created a file share now. Uh, then I can go inside the file share and create another container. Uh, or uh, I can just simply connect this file share, what I created now, and go to my local PC. I can show you that how easy it is to connect this file share, what we created on a local Windows 10 as well. Not only Windows 10, um, you could connect this file share to a Windows. You can connect to Linux or a Mac operating system as well. So I launched my PowerShell without an admin control, basic controls. Uh, if I go back to my PC, you can see that there is only one network drive which is mounted already, which is called uh, work files, which is not related to this. So I'm going to execute this command and once you hit enter, you would see that this file share is automatically connected to my local con local PC as well. So now the command is being run successfully. If you notice, I can see that there is a new file share connected to my local PC. Now I can go inside this file share and uh, I can just use it as like any other network file. So I can drop in files, I can download files, I can upload files, etc. It's super cool. So I'm going to create a file within the storage uh, folder or the SMB drive itself. I'm going to call it as a sample doc. Um, and uh, we're going to see that if I can access these files in the, uh, in the browser. So I created this file. Let's get rid of that, minimize that, go back to the Azure file share container, hit refresh. Yeah. So anything what you create in the local drive, because even though it is local file, it's still an Azure, uh, Azure container. So I'm going to upload a file in the storage explorer. If I go back to my local folder, you get the whole idea, right? Now I can see that over there as well. So this is super powerful and super effective thing. So now you can go ahead and take this SMB drive and attach to multiple PCs as well, so that you all get a collaborative container where you can all share your documents, files, your log files, your work tools, etc. That's a quick example of how you can create a blob container and a file container. Then there is tables, queues, etc. for your development purposes. So for this AZ900, this is plenty enough knowledge for you to kickstart your start learning. Another thing what you can do within the storage account is you can diagnose and solve problems. So there is a default monitoring and insight preview, which is available under the monitoring tab. So you can click on insight, which will give you insights about what's happening within your storage account. What's the transactions like? What's the availability like? If there is any performance degradation, you can, of course, always come and check here because it gives you more thorough in-depth details like what you need to find out about read operations, write operations, availability, uh, the latency delay, etc. So this is an amazing feature. So uh, if I'm not sure whether you are the right audience about it, but if you are a storage administrator, and uh, one of your team always contact you to say that, oh, my application is running super slow. Uh, it's the blame of the storaging team. So what a storage team can do, they can go in here and always find the details and submit that details back to the uh, application team. 
and uh, you can uh, create this as a dashboard and you can make this dashboard available for your application team and they or yourself can always go to the dashboard and you can see the relevant information all the time. We learned about the dashboard in the beginning because this dashboard will give you capability to organize uh, your Azure portal in however you want. And you can keep all the relevant and important information and you can customize in such a way that you always get a quick glance of your Azure environment when you sign into the Azure portal for the first time. Now to avoid the additional cost, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete all the resources what I have created for this exercise because I don't want to keep these idle resources anytime. That's the beautiful thing about Azure. You can learn something and once you completed your learning cycle, you can of course go and delete these resources. So you're not going to pay any more for these resources. So that concludes exploration of Azure storage services. We learned about how to create a storage account. We created a brand new container, learned about uploading and downloading files. On the side, we have learned about how to create a file share and how to attach the file share by an SMB protocol on a local Windows 10 machine as well. And finally, we learned about how to monitor your storage account and created a dashboard to keep track of your storage account monitor as well. In the next video, we're going to explore Azure database services. So we'll see you on the next one. Till then, take care.